Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of the Path to Profit Podcast. If you're joining me for the first time, my name is Bobby. And every single week on this episode, what we do is break down everything that went on in the current market, including the indexes, the industry groups, and much, much more to get you ready to trade for next week. So without further ado, this is the Rapid Review. All right. So as always, down in the description, you have timestamps. If you'd like to jump around and see what the agenda is for this week. Uh, Also, stay tuned to the very end. I give my zero through 10 rating on the market so you can see where I think this market's going. But let's get started with the current state of the market. So market is in a confirmed uptrend. It's been that way for what has now been five weeks, 25 and I will clarify this because I know a couple people are asking, this is 25 trading days, not actually 25 calendar days, 25 trading days that we have been in a confirmed uptrend. In terms of distribution, so we started off the week with one distribution day on the S&P, and we ended up gaining one distribution day on each index, finishing out with two distribution days in the S&P and one distribution day in the NASDAQ. So we'll jump over to the distribution day tracker to take a look. You can see that we got that day on Thursday the 9th. Um, so where we're sitting right now in terms of distribution, the main purpose of this tracker is to see when we're going to lose distribution days. If distribution days fall off and all and become relevant, shows that we're not getting a cluster of distribution, which means that there's not selling coming to the market, which is positive if you are bullish on the market. Now, in terms of price movement, we have to get 5% above the close of distribution day. We have a ways to go there. Um, and then in terms of trading days, again, these two of them, uh, one on the SP, one on the NASDAQ just came in. So those got a while to go. But the uh, 27th, the January 27th distribution day, um, halfway there, we're getting there, could soon drop off the next two weeks um, due to just time. Let's jump over now and take a look at the moving averages. The big thing for this week is on all indexes, we got below the 10 day simple moving average. Um, I talked about this last week. Not a major concern, fluctuating up and down above the 10-day simple moving average. Um, And we are still above the 21, the 50, and the 200. Um, I'd also mentioned we were starting to maybe get a little bit on the higher towards the double end digits on the 50-day simple moving average. It wasn't too alarming, too concerning. But now that we've pulled back to 5.6%, especially on the NASDAQ, 3.1% on the S&P above the 50-day, it's much, much more... um, comfortable point to be off of the 50 day, not as far extended. Uh, Like I said, I don't think we were that concerning last week, but this is just a little more in line where we don't feel as far extended off of that uh, moving average. So we jump over for the week and look at the S&P, which was down 1.11%, NASDAQ down 2.41%, and the Dow down 0.71%, sorry, 0.17%. And for the year, the S&P was up 6.54%. NASDAQ up one, oh, sorry, 11.96%, the Dow up 2.18%. So NASDAQ still leading out the year, S&P in second, Dow in third. All right, let's jump over to Thinkorswim and let's take a look at the indexes. All right, so with the NASDAQ, we'll take a quick little zoom in. Um, but you can see we had a pullback this week, which I think a lot of us did expect as how rapidly we were rising over the past few weeks. Um, You can see this one right here indicating we had that distribution day that did come in on the NASDAQ on Thursday. That was also the day that we broke below the 10-day simple moving average and Friday followed up remaining below there. Um, You can see though this week, we did get the 21-day above the 200-day simple moving average, which was a positive sign. And we can still say the 50-day is trending higher. So that was the price action for the week. We'll look at the weekly. You can see All these up ones in a row, pulling back, having that first down week um, that we've had in a little bit. The big thing that stands out, you can't see it on this chart, but what really uh, was something I was looking to see how we closed out the week, considering how the price action was, was volume. And if you look, especially on MarketSmith, the volume was lighter this week than it was prior. So showing you that there was more buyers coming in the last two weeks than there were sellers coming in this week. So below average volume on the selling um, but other than that, that's really all we got on the NASDAQ. I'll take a quick look at the S&P. 
there you have it. Same thing, pulling back, finding support at that 21 day. And then uh, same thing, pulling back there. One thing that I did want to bring up um, for anybody who's skeptical about technical analysis, we had shown this yellow line and we had talked about this a few weeks ago being a possible area of resistance. You can see on both of these indexes, it was very clear that we met resistance at this prior peak that we had right there. So this is why it's very important to pay attention to technical analysis because um, you can kind of get an idea of what the market sh might do and how it might react. Um, so this was, I think, a very, very expected pullback that could happen right around this price level. And then how we react furthermore going with this price level is going to tell us which way the market is. That's the next step. We got to get above this area and get to uh, above the really the high of the February 2nd day if we want to see this market continue to do well. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Key level is going to stay the same. It's the on both indexes, the June 2nd on the upside and then the downside. Again, keep an eye on that 200-day so moving average. Um, I think that's the most important on where we are at this point. So let's jump over and get started now on industry groups, top 10, bottom 10 weekly performers, big jumps and falls in the rankings. And we'll go into the top 20 industry groups with looking at leading stocks and some possible actionable stocks. All right, top 10 weekly performers on the screen. Um, down week and oil performed fairly well. So opposite of last week, last week we had a pretty strong up week. Oil did the worst. This week, down week, oil doing better. Um, it's really, look, I mean, there's definitely some plays still in that area, but nothing much more really to say there. And on the bottom 10 weekly performers, yeah, it's just really not much. I mean, this is something we'll look at, see if we see trends, but nothing that's sticking out here. Biggest weekly rank jumps. So the big thing now for me was really seeing this electronic semiconductor manufacturers jumping up 45 spots. I think we've all seen in our routines that these electronic semiconductor manufacturers have started to show some strength. And now we're finally starting to see that translate into the rankings. It is important to remember that the rankings are based on the RS rating, which is a, uh, a little uh, slower to react to trend changes because they want to see that trend be consistent, not just a couple good up weeks. Um, but so now that it's been a little bit where it's week after week, we're starting to see the RS get better. We are now seeing them climbing through the rankings. Um, finance definitely popping up here too, jumping through the rankings. And I think you'll see that a lot on your routines as well. Excuse me. Falls in the rankings. Um, computer software getting hit. Energy coal, energy solar, uh, which had been lagging. The past couple of weeks is kind of affecting it now, but nothing else really more to say there. So we'll look at the top 20 groups. Um, you can see there uh, you have a uh, the oil, gas, machinery, equipment, big jump from 29 to 19. Um, mining, you'll see that. That jump from 19 to 16, which is a, a good jump. And you'll see a lot of those kind of stocks on your list. Uh, apparel shoes, um, retail shoes, those dropping. This one dropping, the uh, shoes and accessories dropping out of the top 10. Um, yeah, not much more else to say in 20 through 11, but definitely something to keep an eye on. All right, so we'll go into the top 10 industry groups. We'll look at what I call the Campos Composite uh, stocks based on my criteria, which you guys can see on the screen, and we'll highlight any of those which are actionable. All right, so let's jump over to MarketSmith, and we'll start off with the number 10 industry group. Now, the very, very interesting thing that you're going to see here is that every single one of these groups actually, let me just move some stuff around, um, except the top one has failed this week. Not failed this week, but we've been down this week, I guess is a better way to say. And, and there's definitely some rotation going on in the industry group. So, so it'll be really important to see if this market does continue higher, how the groups tend to work out. You want to see where that leadership is coming. And it definitely seems like we're starting to see some rotation coming in the industry group. So uh, here you have number 10, retail specialty. It was 11 last week, jumped into the top 10, but it was down 2.03%, 95 on the RS rating, RS line, you can see kind of flat and up below the 10 day. And that's something you're going to see on a lot. Um, jump over and look at stocks. You got Ulta in that one. All right. Number nine, building commercial, residential and commercial. Building has definitely been popping up on my list a lot. Um, but you can see this group is also down. 
Um, I'm not going to read through. Um, my new thing is I'm not going to read through all the stats that are in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. I'm assuming you, I know you guys could read. So, um, But yeah, for this one, I mean, kind of similar to the market, you've seen it pull back. Another one that's down, um, RS line. I, it's really been getting hit the past couple of weeks as it pulled back. So. And there you have the top groups. This has the most um, top stocks, most stocks in the group. A um, couple of them that are in a base or actionable. So I like those for you there. Number eight, steel producers. Um, this got hit pretty big this week with the 6.11% down there. Um, yeah, still above that 21. A lot of these are still above the 21. So it's kind of that healthy pullback. We'll see what ends up happening, but nothing more to say there. And then there you have your stocks, two stocks, one actionable. All right, next up, number seven. So you have leisure, movies, and related there. Um, again, another group down for the week. This one actually got below its 21-day uh, exponential moving average. You can see below 10 and 21, RS line very flat. And uh, if we're looking at some of the actionable stocks there, just that one, same as, not actionable, sorry, uh, leading stock is just that IQ that was here last week. All right, next up, number six. See that on your screen. This one was down the least. This one's been, I guess, the most flat. You can see the daily bars, there's a lot of volatility, it seems, but yeah, not much else to highlight here. A couple stocks. Caterpillar, um, that's a questionable and actionable. I mean, depending on how you look at it, but, um, and that's definitely a, a stock I would be paying attention to just considering what they're doing within the industry. Um, it's not just the construction equipment that you would normally think. Um, they're starting to change the way that they do business and starting to go into a lot of the technological advancements that every industry is going into. All right, number five. Commercial services leasing, again, another group down, another group down below its 10 day. Uh, this RS line looks a little bit healthier. Um, it's starting to flatten out, but it's kind of overall trending higher. So I just put higher. Um, and this jumped up from eight to five. And then there you have your stocks. A couple actionable. And then we'll look at number four. Metal products distributor, distributors, uh, again, this one, ironically, um, oops, I actually, oh no, this one actually did, I am correct, uh, maintain above all of its moving averages, one of the few that did, even though it was down. Um, this RS line trending higher, still just like a mild pullback with what's going on. No stocks to mention here though. I'm going through this real, real quick this week because there just isn't a lot to talk about minus the fact that almost all these, <laughs> nine out of 10 are, are down for the week. Uh, retail department stores, you could see that on your screen. Another pullback, another one below the 10 day, down for the week. Um, overall trending up on the RS, but you know, the past couple of weeks it's been trending down. So I said flat to up over the past couple of weeks. And uh, one stock there. Number two, retail wholesale office supplies, three last week, up to two. And this one actually broke below its 21 day EMA as well. And no stocks to mention. And then finally, you got number one, top for the weeks, oil, gas, field services. Still seeing oil and gas in there. Um, this was the only group that was up for the week in the top 10, uh, squeaking out up 0.78% um, and also maintaining itself above all the moving averages, having that strong finish on Friday. And uh, yeah, other than that, that is all we have. Oh, actually, I forgot. I keep forgetting to do that. There we go. The uh, stocks in that top one, a couple actionable. But yeah, that is all we have for the industry groups. I think the big important thing when it comes to the industry groups right now is just being patient, really keeping an eye and, and doing your due diligence every single due diligence every single week just to see what's going on because at some point leadership is going to show and you want to be ready with that and. If you are not prepared and you're catching the leadership a little bit later, it might be hard to get into some of the stocks in the group if it's extended. So being able to see this transition maybe to what looks promising like the electronic semiconductor manufacturing, um, home builders definitely seem to be doing fairly well. See if these trends are going to kind of carry through and become a little more stronger and, and a little more obvious that their leaders will be beneficial to you and your trading. Here we got...
uh, earnings, still some earnings out there. Threw some stocks up. Take a look if any of those are on your lists. Um, and I've noticed that there's definitely been a good chunk of stocks that have been on my watch list that are a week or two out from reporting. So be conscious if you're going to be putting new positions on a stock that has earnings right around the corner. Very often, the stock's price action tends to slow down because a lot of people are waiting to see what does this next report bring. Um, and also be very conscious of a stock that you're holding into earnings. It's a very volatile period. Sometimes it can be up, down, up or down 10%. So, all right. So now for the stance on the market, and this is my zero through 10 rating on the market on the scale that you see on the screen here. So last week I was at a uh, very, very large 7.8. This week, given everything that has gone on, I am at, drum roll please, 7.2. Very large two on that. Uh, 7.2. Look, I think this was one of those things that was somewhat expected. We were getting very extended. We know that the market always pulls back. We pulled back to a a comfortable level. Um, I think the biggest thing that is still a question in my mind is where is this leadership coming? The same things I just was talking about before is in a sustained uptrend. Sometimes you're it's going to be you want to know where that leadership's coming, and if it's not very clear, it's going to be a little harder to trade. Overall, I think this was just a healthy pullback. Um, I think we can definitely be exposed in this market, but it's not a market to be fully invested in just yet. It's a market to be patient and uh, just sit back and wait. I don't think, look, there's never a time where you can predict which way the market's going to go. But in a time like this, it's a lot harder because there's just, we're in that like kind of crossroads these past couple, I'd say really this past like, week, even last week where it's like, everything's looking very positive, but we're not out of the clear yet. We're not in a sustained uptrend to the point where it's like, we're no overhead resistance. We're climbing higher and everybody could just be fully invested and and happy about it. Um, But same on the flip side, I don't think this is the market to be in cash. I think there is opportunities out there. There are trades to be made, um, but you just got to be disciplined in the trades that you are placing and make sure that you're buying the best merchandise out there and you are doing so with risk in mind. So that is all I got for this week. We made it this far. If you enjoyed the show, uh, please subscribe. Down below, you can click that link right there. Uh, to subscribe, turn notifications, do this every single week. Um, not getting a chance to do any chart breakdown um, other than this one, this week, uh, which is a viewer request. And then if you want, you can see last week and the week before is chart breakdowns in that bottom right hand corner. Check that out. But yeah, appreciate everything. I'll talk to you guys next week. Stay disciplined.